Welcome back. This is Fantastic Pains and how we hide them. I'm not Chris. And I'm not Karina. But we're here together. As usual. For more fun times and shenanigans. shenanigans. I was like trying to hold it and not look at you because I was sure you were mocking me. I again, wasn't mocking you. I was it's fine. I was reacting to the, the suddenness of starting. <laughs> you want I know. I know. I, just, I got what I wanted. I just complied. Okay. Anyway. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. This is our sibling duo <laughs> podcast slash YouTube channel about life with chronic and invisible conditions. Mm -hmm. um, where can they find us? Um, you can find us on YouTube. You mm -hmm. can see us in YouTube, actually. Yes. Um, you can also find us on Spotify, Audible, and Google Amazon. Podcast, and Amazon. Yep. And little little sites, too. So. Yes many along the way you can also join us on discord if you want to hang out and talk or have questions or want to watch the lives or join in on the lives yeah, it's the absolutely. best way to do it the lives are amazing i recommend mm -hmm. we do time. them on friday and saturday yep. friday evening saturday morning gmt time. <laughs> that time with the mountains in the not negative Europe. seven negative seven mm -hmm. that's minus seven is our time zone. oh that's interesting mm -hmm. i didn't know that I don't like that it's a seven. <laughs> I do. Why is it like oh, anyway. sevens are my thing? They are your thing, huh? Yeah. yeah. Everything about my birth was seven. So he's just the lucky. No, Rin took my luck. <laughs> I used to be the lucky. Is that a little spider? It is. You can see it on the screen. It's a tiny little bitty baby spider. And it didn't like when I pointed at it. And now it has curled up. Um, but I need you to like go somewhere, please. Cause I don't really relish the idea of you hanging out behind people. <laughs> oh my God. I chose violence. <laughs> it could have been violent. <laughs> That's a fry. That was a fry. <laughs> anyway, wow. What are we talking about what today? Just happened. Uh, we're gonna be talking about memorable doctor experiences. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna have just stories yep. and the things we've learned outside of doctors and from other trash pandas yeah indeed but first it is time for the weekly recap check in indeed um yeah it's it's been a time and a half mm -hmm. and we both have some doctor appointment recaps so that's good yes you want me to go first yeah okay um my week was not super heavy, but I did wind up seeing neurology on Monday, and that was really obnoxious, actually, because while my face has been dormant thus far, and dormant is not the right word either, so I had trigeminal neuralgia, which has periods of, like, remission, but at the same time, I keep getting, like, peaks of pain where it's just like, oh, don't forget about me. I could still be there. You yep. never know. Um, and at that point, it was, like, four days of silence, and... The neurologist was like, cool, I hope it was just a blip. He just crossed your fingers. Yeah. And I was like, what about the cervical spine thing? Like, what what are we going to do about that, looking into that? And he goes, well, I don't know. That's not like my specialty. I don't I don't know. He was very helpful. And that was it. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. And then I had therapy. And my therapist was like, would you like a new neurologist? <laughs> Would you be open to seeing a new neurologist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, so she recommended somebody that I had actually had an interaction with that I really liked beforehand mm -hmm. um, in the long, long ago. So hopefully I will be getting a new neurologist. Yeah. And then I have workouts set up for the following week. Uh, so hopefully I'll be getting back into that because I need to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I'm just trying to like fight the storms and the fatigue and trying to be a person sometimes yeah it's hard <laughs> every time i'm like i'm fully rested and recovered from my year i'm like oh no i can't get out of bed yeah <laughs> oops <laughs> well that's eds for you yeah there's no escape <clears throat> but yeah nothing too exciting excite well exciting we had um our new intern on yesterday ah, yeah we did yeah. We didn't get a lot done because we were too busy just trauma dumping at each other. Yes. Which was so the three of us were just like, hey, you ever have the thing where like uh, the the childhood hurts? And he was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. It's like, cool. Me too. <laughs> it was a lot of that and tons of ADHD moments. Yeah. So 
Well, we sat down and we started to record and then quickly realized that I was like, we're not going to get an episode out of it. It's going to be so hard to edit. But we're so enjoying this conversation. Yeah, it was great. And so we just hung out. I love him. I'm he's... glad that he's willing to work with us. Yeah. He's a good kid. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited and he's happy. Oh, the life got to meet him. Oh, yeah, that's true. So... Faye got to talk to him. Mm -hmm. Who else was in our live yesterday? We had Jen for a little bit. Yeah. And then he met Jen in person. That was good. Yeah. I feel like there was someone else, but I can't remember. Faye and Doggo. Doggo for a little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was smaller light, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was good stuff. How about you? I went to the doctor mm -hmm. and it was weird. So I went and they were like an hour behind, which was real fun. Oh. Not a big deal though. Like I don't mind waiting. There were definitely people that were not happy about the wait yeah. in the in the waiting room, but I was cool. <laughs> I was like, all right, I have phone games. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Um. And so they weighed me, which was a shock because <laughs> he was I, ready to be a self abusive. Oh, dude, I I got weighed and then I walked into the uh, into the room and sat down, and I was just stunned. And Jen was looking at me. She's like, "What's up?" <laughs> I was like, "My weight." And she was like, "Oh no, how bad?" And I was like. I've lost 30 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> that still like blows my mind. And that's since when? Is that since that's the hospital? That's since the hospital. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's since septic time. Yep. I haven't weighed this much since I lived at the Marks, which would have been 11 years ago. Wow. Because of Rin. She made me fat. Thanks, Rin. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I like, lost 30 pounds. Thanks, Rin. <laughs> this is all your fault. All of it. Both good and bad. <laughs> No, but like that, I, it's just weird to me. It's it's fantastic, so I'll just roll with it. <clears throat> I get it though. Like after I had my second hip surgery, my weight slipped, and I was like, ah, oh. oh well, we can't yeah. do anything about that now. <laughs> and then I got to see Doctor Bamba, mm -hmm. but I had to see like the there's a nurse in training because it's a teaching uh, facility. And she was really nice. She was intrigued by the EDS stuff. Very very nice. She kept apologizing. Good. I was like, no, you're fine. I don't care. Because they want to like poke and prod. And yeah. Like, can you do the up? Oh, sorry, you're still a person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then Bamba was able to fill most of my meds, which was great because yes. I haven't had most of them in like three months, mm -hmm. which we talked about last week. So, yeah. And we've had really sweet responses to that. I yeah. don't know if you've been following. Yeah. But people have been really nice in the discord about it. So yeah. I appreciate it. It helps a lot. And we'll get there. It's just the in between times. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, and I have a referral to new pain management. Yeah, yeah. That was the whole point of seeing Bamba, so, yeah. so she could write that. Well, and thank God for your, like, other meds being filled. Oh, it's, shit. It's a nightmare. It is. It's a hellscape. Because <clears throat> mm -hmm. then you're like, you don't know what's doing what until it stops doing it. Yeah. And then you're like, wait, oh. I kind of needed that. Oops. I was doing things. I thought I was faking this whole time, but turns out I was well medicated. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Have you met bipolar? Mm -hmm. Oh, ooh, yeah. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> it's been a lot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was good. And then I hung out with the kids. And then we did. We had to see Dorian yesterday, which was great. Yep. Good so. Stuff. so, yeah. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. But on the topic of like our stories about memorable doctors, this came up in the live um, on Friday. Yeah. And actually, it's just perfect because we all have those like memorable moments with doctors so on the lighter side we've talked about like the people who stuck in your mind because they either were the ones to do something about something mm -hmm. ask more questions about something or like be intrigued enough to want to follow your case even if they're not involved yes yeah. oh yeah because i think we've both had instances of that mm -hmm. I, I mean i've had er guys go i don't understand you <laughs> like they they were intrigued and they were like this is fascinating but it doesn't make sense to me and i was like all right yeah. i'm sorry i can't change my stats well and we get like a set it's like a scripted response and you mm -hmm. just roll for which one you get <laughs> pretty much it's like oh wow you're really weird or like, yeah, like oh one. my god you're just your body is fascinating or then you get like um <laughs> oh it's supposed to do that <laughs> you're like what? Yeah, no, or they're yeah. like, well, you're making it do that. And you're like, also, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. Where do you want to start? Mm, at the beginning. The beginning of what? The, of, of memories. I don't know. <laughs> the beginning of memories. My first memory of a doctor <clears throat> was in a bright room and he was smacking me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, that's my birth story. No, my birth story is interesting because my mom didn't know she was pregnant with me until I was born. Your mom would have been on that show. She I didn't would've. know I was pregnant. She didn't. <laughs> I just happened. Bam. There he is. Oh, I guess we have this now. You have a son today. Yeah. Here you go. Yay, I did it. Oh, this came out of you. You didn't know it was there? <laughs> yeah, you didn't notice? <laughs> nope. Not though. And I wasn't little either. I was seven pounds. Like, <laughs> that's a, a, a decent sized baby. She just had organ room so that you could move around in there. Mm -hmm. I must have been very still, too. Just <laughs> never move. Anyway. You were just indigestion. That's what your baby <laughs> nickname was. Indigestion. She was eating me. I was indigestion. No. That's what that means, right? No. You were indigestion. The bull indigestionable <laughs> if you say so okay um <laughs> i'm trying to think of like a really good positive experience my oh i okay a lot of our positives are with like pas mine are with new students or my, my the one i'm thinking of right now okay i thought i would talked about this during the life but it's a good story <laughs> so i broke my hand and had dog bites mm -hmm. all over me and I, I drove home and it took forever and finally got to, to the hospital, like in mm -hmm. early in the morning. It's like, OK, let's let's have it looked at at least. Yeah. And they did x-rays and then they had to clean out the wounds because they were worried about rabies. <laughs> yeah. And I had three <laughs> baby doctors like they were they were babies and not just like they were they were new new. They were. It was their first day out on the floor and they were scared shitless. You could just tell they were clumped together. They wouldn't leave each other's side and they, they like didn't know what to do. So the, the, the ER doc's like, all right, I need you to clean his wound and then I'll come back and look, you know? Yeah. And they had one of those like they have to, spray. Like, debris it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They had one of those spray things and they were doing it like very gently. Like they were like, Little like bit trickling and, it oh, and they were like sorry sorry i'm like okay look it, it hurts already and it's not gonna hurt more like you have to spray it hard inside of the wound you have to too. get in there yeah. yeah and they were like oh okay so they start doing it hard and they're like oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry and then like they're just taking turns and oh it's like come on guys you, it's not hard you're not hurting like of all the like people we're that, sharing like, the responsibility so yes. that we all go to hell for hurting the people. Exactly. <laughs> but they weren't. And like of all the people to worry about, like I'm the yeah. last person's gonna be like, oh no, stop. Right. You're debriding my wound too roughly. Mm hmm Yeah. It oh. was it was fun. And then they were so nice. They they thanked me afterwards. And then That's cute. I found out my hand was broken. I had to get a cast and all that. But you know, it was what it was. Cute. I don't know that I've had good experiences with ER. Really? Mm. Yeah. Urgent care sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Other times it's just like a run around of back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Yep. Or they find like a random heart murmur. And then oh, yeah. Like, heart murmur. I'm like, Happens. hydrate me and that will go away. <laughs> yeah. Like that's just part of the settings. Yeah. Uh huh. That's the, the engine light yeah. coming on. Um, I don't know. Some of my more memorable ones, like on the positive end, um, when I was doing, it was like Denver Metro something, something. It was like reduced cost, hmm. not quite Medicaid yeah. stuff. Um, when I saw the PA the first time and she was like, oh my gosh, you have so much going on with you. Let's get you taken care of. We're going to create a plan. And then she like put everything together to create the plan with like referral and everything. Yeah. And that was the first time I'd had anybody like take me seriously. And the gabapentin, I, it's, I think that's what makes it so memorable was that the gabapentin made such an enormous difference. Yeah. Right away. And she was just super lovely about it. Um, yeah. Just fascinating people who would come around and be like you're so weird and interesting i'm so game to follow this plan mm -hmm. <laughs> like just very sweet people 
But then other people were not so fun. No. We've had so I've had so many negative interactions. It's not even funny. I have a few like memorable <sighs> ones, but other ones are just like, eh. Remember Fatima? Anyone uh, remember Fatima? Uh, <laughs> you've been here for a while. I'm she sure subbed in for pain management. She was like, I'm going to be here for three weeks. Let me ruin everybody's week. Yeah. Like, let's not prescribe anything for these pain management patients that are on things. Yeah. And tell them that they don't need them. Yeah. No, you you're don't fine. need that. Congratulations. You're cured. What? <laughs> Excuse me? You're cured of your medication dependence. She was so bad. And then she apologized for me to my wife. That I'm was sorry me. you have to deal with him. <sighs> That's messed up. I was in the room. I was right there. Mm -hmm. You can't just you can't just do that. That's not cool. I don't care if you're foreign or not. <laughs> well, and when the staff found out. Oh, yeah. They were like, oh, yeah, she's messed up everybody the yep. whole time she's been here. They and apologized it's been a nightmare. profusely. Yeah. Yeah. Was not good people. That was that was part of the discussion we had to have with um, Doctor Bamba was about the um, closing of New Health because she didn't oh, know yeah. about it and we're like, yeah, this place that did mental health, physical health, and PT mm -hmm. and therapies and surgeries and yeah, they did all everything of it was under the one umbrella. Mm -hmm. They're gone because you can't have nice things. I don't know why that model doesn't. <sighs> it worked. It should be. It was just mismanaged as that model. Like mm -hmm. if. I, I just don't understand. It, it was totally mismanaged. That's all. These these three guys that were from like Turkey. shadow investors <laughs> from Turkey. Yeah, there was one one Decided American investor, but she was a woman, and they didn't <clears throat> listen to her. Uh, the doctor Nicole or mm -hmm. the nurse Nicole. Yeah. They just... And then one day they just sold it. Yeah, they they closed it. They're like done. No yeah. more. <laughs> We're bankrupt. Didn't even tell Nicole. Mm -mm. She was a partner. She was out of the country at the time, and they closed it while she was gone. She's just crazy yeah yeah but i don't i just don't know what that model isn't a standard the model it should be it needs to be that the model i got so much out of it right and it was so so nice <clears throat> well like i think you had someone to lean on yeah well i think it's valuable for like other people with other chronic pains to be able to interact yep because you had like groups and yeah we did but it's part of the intake is you would do group with other people yeah for like six weeks and that's the thing like not only can you learn from them but you can be an example for other people to learn from and you get to see different facets of yeah a lot of what people got through. like they, they weren't excited to be there until the second week when they realized yeah. it wasn't bad right and most of what we got was that we're not alone mm -hmm. like that was huge for a lot of these people to be like oh wow other people are suffering right right yeah, you're not alone It's just crazy. Mm -hmm. And then I had to do, I still have to do, um, like mental health with Kaiser. Yeah. <clears throat> even though it's all under the same umbrella, there's still like some weird stuff that goes on. Like with neurology. <laughs> yeah. Shenanigans can so still happen. Now I need to make an appointment with the other neurologist and see if that goes any better. Yeah. And hopefully it does because I'm tired of the like, well, that happened, but it might not ever again. So... Bye. Mm -hmm. See you later. <laughs> yeah, no joke. I'm trying to think of all the other experiences. Like, most of them are negative, and I'm trying not to be negative. Yeah. But. Like, when you found your doctors, what was it like to find your team? <sighs> like, when you had team. Yeah, when I had teams. Yeah. I've, I've had, like, two solid teams. I had one with, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, not an RN nurse practitioner np um and she she was the one that did the imaging the first images oh, okay because she took me seriously i went in and was like i have this this and this and she's like okay let's get imaging done yeah cool let's do that wonderful i yeah. got told i wasn't crazy yeah and then we did the imaging and everything went well and that was fantastic because she took care of everything that's so nice she she did all the referrals she made sure the referrals followed up is that emily no emily was the um Room rheumatologist that yeah. was like okay. it's probably this thing that yeah. we thought it was mm -hmm. um no this would have been uh head head to toe i think is what it was called okay and it, it was the first one i had and mm -hmm. she had to close down because the medicaid changed their pricing and she couldn't 
afford Shocking. it. So she went and got a job somewhere else. Yeah. And it had to close her practice, which sucked. Sucks. I've had that so many times where they have to close down on yeah. you. Well, because it's not profitable to help people not fall into the traps that were set up for us to all fall into. Yeah. Where's the profit in that? Very true. Where's the profit in healthy people? Yeah. Where so, I mean... Hopefully we find out that this new place is good. Yeah. It had a good review. So hopefully I can come back and be like, yeah, well, well they did well, this, Jen this, and this. And... Gave it the thumbs up, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. She was, she scrutinized it pretty hard. Good. <clears throat> I told her to check the glass door reviews. The glass door? Yeah. It's where uh, rating employers. Oh. So like you go on, you can see what people are saying about the place you're applying for. That's cool. But you can learn a lot of dirt that way. Right. So see it's, how it's it handy to, to check. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's another doctor shopping tip for you. That's a good one. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that. Mm -mm. But you're right. Like seeing it from the inside is just as important. Because yep. then you can spot like where the breakdowns are. Yeah. When they eventually come around. Mm -hmm. That's good. So that's that's a thing. Yeah. What else? There there's there have been lots of like small positive interactions like mm -hmm. when i broke my hand and she looked at it and went yeah your hand's broken because <laughs> it, it, it happened a second time yeah where this one broke oh yeah i do remember that i landed on the corner of a table and it caught just that one part and then i blacked out and then it yeah. it snapped again um Oof. which was great to be, be believed because i was this is during the era of no one believing me about yeah. anything so to have one doctor go, oh, yeah, no, that's definitely broken because it was giant and black. And right. It's like, yep, probably. Mm -hmm. And then she she casted it and it was great. That reminds me of like the time I first dislocated my ankle. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I didn't want to go because I was like, they're not going to believe me. And I'm pretty sure I got it put back in. But it was like it was bad and it hurt horribly. And we went in and <laughs> the nurse was so sweet. He was just so nice. And he was like. He came in and he gave me morphine well, while they looked at my like images and they were like, you've got it mostly through. There's a little gap right here, but we can see like where you've dislocated it. But I think you did a good job putting it back in. And then they brought me morphine, gave me morphine, looked at my husband and he was like, is she going to be able to walk out of here? And the guy goes, based on how she was acting after dislocating her ankle, I don't know that she's going to have a problem at all. Good. <laughs> Damn. And I remember just sitting there and being like, it's like Tylenol. If Tylenol worked. Wow. It's amazing. <laughs> but they were very sweet. That reminds me of the first time I tried pain meds. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh my god. I'm in a lot of pain all the time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah turning out the background noise was crazy. And mm -hmm. then coming to terms with the fact that it's real. Yeah. You know? Oh, learning that we unlearning the like self scrutiny of um am i faking yeah which we still have to unlearn because there are times where i'm like hey, you should have gone to the urgent care at least yeah. and i'm like i'm never i'm not going because if it's gonna be a thing i don't want to go <laughs> the emily story is a good story that is a good story because she was really there for both of us yeah she she really helped push the diagnostic train mm -hmm. into motion yeah so we i had the appointment with her this was a, a, technically a follow-up appointment Yeah. because I saw the rheumatologist and he looked at my hands and went, no, go oh away. Oh my God, I hate that. When they're like, your knuckles aren't swollen. I don't want to talk to you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we saw, we went in and we got seen by the, the nurse practitioner who works mm -hmm. there. And we presented her with the idea that it could be uh, EDS. And she had a <laughs> worksheet mm -hmm. and she did the workup and was like, yeah, no, you both probably have EDS. Like, yeah that's where we we got the courage i guess to mm. go pursue it because yeah somebody in the medical field could agree with our findings mm -hmm. that meant that we weren't like making it up and we weren't just being google doctors yeah we were on to something that was like real mm -hmm. and tangible and she was so sweet the whole time because she even like looked at you yeah you know like you came with for support but at the same time she's like what what can you do show, show me <laughs> she's like party tricks all around come on yeah yeah and it was great oh she was very sweet mm-hmm and she got us set up with like the next steps too. Yeah. And like other people to try. Um, she even got me hooked up with um, fatigue meds. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's who that was. Oh, yeah. Because she put me on 
one that didn't work, but yeah. it put me on the the train of like, there's mm-hmm. got to be something I can take for the fatigue. Right. Yeah. No, she was great. I loved her. She was very sweet. Because mm-hmm. I remember just every, anytime we had an appointment like that, when we were like, oh, but I think it might be a thing. It was always nice to have somebody to go with. Yeah. And that's really where we found our best like doctor shopping moments too. True. Having somebody else there to yeah. be able to be like, no, that was awful and you need to see someone different. Yeah. You need to bring a, an accountability buddy. Yes. Because Jen went with me yeah. to my first doctor when I, I tried. started at Kaiser. I was there. I yeah. just wasn't allowed in the room because there'd be too many people. It was just stupid. And it made sense to make Jen go because she, like, yeah. she doesn't take crap from anybody. No. And she was terrible. She was like, you don't need a diagnosis. And I was like, yeah, I do. I do. And she was like, no, we'll treat you the same way anyway. It doesn't matter. No, you won't. And I was like, no, no, no. Especially because all there needed to do, like all she had to do was write a referral. Yeah. To see genetics. And that was it. And she was like, nope. Nope. I'm not going to do it. So. <laughs> Chen came out of that appointment and was livid. Yeah. She was just ranting. I was and on ranting. the verge of tears yeah. leaving because I felt just so shut down and like brushed off. And yep. It actually is a testament to like how far we've come that that appointment and neurology played out fairly similarly. Uh, and neurology, yeah. I can just kind of brush off and be like, huh, okay, we're not seeing you anymore. Yeah. Um, like you didn't feel great coming out of it, but you were right. Didn't, like you I didn't have a meltdown happy at all. about it. But because yeah. I, like, how can you be happy about yeah. Like, oh, you didn't hear a word I said, and you don't care. Awesome. But then I found Dr. Wright, who is the right one. Yeah. He's wonderful. And he's just been absolutely fantastic the whole way through. Um, he's worked really hard to keep us all sane. <sighs> and then he is part of Baby Brothers. Yeah. And actually, I think Little Sisters yeah. team now, too. Mm-hmm. So he gets the full, <laughs> the full gets panel of siblings right and i'm like <laughs> dr right you're the eds doctor now <laughs> take care of the hill family please <laughs> we just brought you a bloodline <laughs> figure it out <laughs> we brought you this bloodline you want a spectrum <laughs> check it out right well and it's interesting to like see that he actually was learning with me and from me exactly because now he can turn to bug and be like oh i can't tell you what was happening blah 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 but i can like to ask your sister yeah that's her, that's his his go-to is yeah. talk to your sister talk to your sister do it yeah no he's been great and then i've had a few really good ones along the way um my t- my pain doctor is pretty good it took us a while to like get on the same page yeah i was that way with dr bomba too yeah. and and marianne before her at that at the mm-hmm. same place we're like the first three visits were like everyone's feeling out the waters yeah so it doesn't come away negative or positive but right. it's frustrating mm-hmm. but then after that it's been amazing yeah. like once they understand you yeah. and they believe you right you're golden well and i think like getting to see them more times in a row builds this consistency that oh, yeah. they can actually like put a picture of who you are together mm-hmm. which helps a lot yeah um <sighs> Because, yeah, Dr. Wright is very much of the mindset of, he's like, you know your body best. You just let me know what you need, and I'll be there to, like, do what you, we need to do to yeah. get you going. Yep. So he's been really lovely. And he's actually, at one point, when uh, my old neurologist was terrible <laughs> and was like, it's migraines. And I'm like, this is not migraines. What are you talking about? Yeah. Um, and he was like, you know, you could see a different doctor. <laughs> hey, have you tried doctor shopping? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Dr. Wright. I think good doctors approve of doctor shopping. Yeah. Because they know that there are bad doctors. Yeah. Which is something a lot of people don't believe. Right. They don't acknowledge the butting of heads mm-hmm. that happens. But yeah, no, it's it's a different world when you have good people in it to help form your opinions of things instead of leaving on those negative cues, which I think we've all been tempted to do. Like when you have a negative interaction and you're like, cool, I'll just be over here for the rest of my oh life. My I'll stand in the corner and speak to no one. Um, yeah, I'm I'll done. Put myself in timeout. Stop taking all of my meds because clearly I'm crazy mm-hmm. and never see a doctor ever again. Yep. Or that's the temptation. you'll listen to the doctor, unfortunately. That, Work yeah. out every day for months and destroy your arms to the point where you can't lift your arms. Yep. At all. Yeah. And then you'll see a doctor go, that's not normal. And <laughs> like, yeah, it is. I thought that was weird. They used to go up, but they don't now. 
I have to, I have to, um, it's like picking a lock to yep. get it up here. Yeah. That's normal. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> You're atrophied in your early 20s. <laughs> because I used a computer. Yeah. Do you use a computer was what he said. No, I, <laughs> yeah, I have one at home. I build them. It's like. <laughs> I'm active, though. I build them. Oh, it's With your just mind muscle atrophy. Your <laughs> because I was bony. Like, I was a twig when I was younger. So of course, it, I guess I could look atrophied, even though I was stronger than shit. Like, yeah, but that's just an EDS thing too. I think yeah, it's annoying. The weird tall, skinny, where yeah. you have just no meat on your bones for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people with it. Yeah, all of us have gone through it. Yep. But yeah, no, having somebody be able to validate your experience is huge, mm -hmm. and never stop until you find that. Yeah, absolutely. Because you deserve to find that and you deserve to have that and you deserve somebody to like take you seriously and ask questions about what's going on. Yeah. Because that's that's what drives me crazy is that there is so little um, like proactive question asking. Oh, yeah. You can tell when someone's interested and cares. Yeah. Because the, they ask questions. Right. Like I hate when you go in and it's like, <clears throat> why are you here? And then there's no other question. You're like, I'm yeah. here because of this, this, and this. Well, you know, uh, uh, like they've already figured this it out. This is totally normal. I glanced at your chart <sighs> and I saw that in 2007, you you might have been depressed. As a baby, you were probably um, backwards. You, but you had anxiety what? and that is causing all of your symptoms. Yeah. Anxiety, of course. It's always anxiety. It's your defeatist attitude. No, no. Your hand hurt because you're on your period, clearly. Yeah. That's... You're a woman, so that... Um... <laughs> the one question they ask you, are you a woman? <laughs> yes. Oh, you're on your period. <laughs> clearly, there's nothing wrong with my you. My back's bleeding? <laughs> like, there's a gash in my spine. No, you're on your period. <laughs> I know how that could be confusing for you. Oh, my God. As a woman. It's so, <laughs> probably had it's many so annoying because Jen gets those chronic... Um, kidney stones yeah and she knows what a kidney stone feels like and she goes in when it's bad because mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to pass them and they're just like no 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 you're menstruating the fuck because we haven't been doing that our whole lives what because <laughs> you don't know what the you should be used to it by now <laughs> oh my god i've heard people say similar things about eds yeah and you're like well you're just you you like when my math teacher was like I can't believe that hurt you. Nothing hurts you. Yeah. You're like, <sighs> I still feel the pain. Guy. Let me, let me explain this. Everything still hurts me. I'm just good at it now. Oh, that was weird. Did you take off into space? I did. I was, um, we were talking. You left your body for a and moment. I suddenly remembered one of those fever dreams. Oh no. And it was like, I wasn't ready for it. Is it like super oh. sensory experience? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sensory dreams are so confusing and frustrating because you can't like track it. Exactly. And every time you try to remember it, you can only f like remember the sensation around it. Yeah. But not what it is. And then you have like a pile of anxiety, but you don't know what it belongs to. That's what happened to me. <laughs> Sorry. That was bizarre. Ugh. And it wasn't even one of the bad dreams. It was just it reminded me of the whole experience. And now I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm like the hairs on the back of my neck are standing up. I don't like it. Yucky. I hate this. Yucky. <sighs> the weather's also crap today. It's yeah. just not great. And the neighbors are stealing all the parking spots. So Yeah, with their yard. <laughs> yeah. Their yard is taking up all the parking. <laughs> yep. Uh -huh. Yeah. But lesson being, don't quit when you find a dead end. Yeah. And don't keep pushing at the dead end, hoping that one day it'll change. Yeah, that that's an easy trap to fall into. The yeah. it'll get better, it'll change. They'll it, trust it, me someday. No. I'll earn their trust. I'll you don't have the if they don't have it already, then <clears throat> yeah, it, it's not worth it. Because they'll still question you if they yeah. didn't believe you in the beginning, but then they're like, oh yeah, no, you're one of the good ones. It's like, <laughs> excuse me, what? <laughs> but then you'll you'll get questioned every time you you have a problem or mm -hmm. yeah, it's not worth it. Ugh. It's just hard. It's hard when you have like a world full of no and you're looking for that like sparsely found yes. Well, it's hard too because like you're going to discount it. You'll be like, oh, I'm just looking for someone who validates my one thing. Right. It's like kind of, but not really because you're 
You're not being unreasonable. You're you're looking for somebody who is going to be interested in helping you long term. Yeah, it's like we say you're looking for a team member. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly it. You are you're building your team, and it needs to act like a team yeah. with you as one of the team members. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it, it's just a matter of like um, partnering up, I guess. Like yeah. finding someone who's willing to work with you and mm-hmm. not just work at you. I miss my old not neurologist, the one who was super interested and asked yeah. questions and was like, oh, I'll have to do some reading on that. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. Like, I don't know uh, what this is and I'm okay with not knowing. <clears throat> Let me learn. Yeah. Instead of like, I don't know. Dead end. Yeah. Let me know if your face explodes, I guess. I'm like, no. <laughs> Stop. Ugh. So break time. Break time. All I'm going right. to break dance, guys. I'm a b-boy now. <laughs> On the table. Did you hiccup? Anyway, <laughs> I can't not. You got the look. Too. It terrifies me. Like, what? I'm gonna be Did terrified that hiccup? Jen's gonna do the same thing because that's something she would do. <laughs> and then she'd look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> My husband pantomimed throwing up oh, poor the guy. other night while I was laying on his chest, and he was asleep and snoring. And then out of the blue, he was just like, <laughs> and I was like, "What was that?" And then he puked all over you. And it was great. he looked at me. He goes. Did I hiccup? <laughs> I was like, I guess you could call it that. Sure. He goes, I dreamed I threw up. It was really realistic. Oh, man, that's so rough. I was like, he didn't vomit on my head, so I'm good now. <laughs> <laughs> Random But it was kid terrifying. Story. This one time, my mom had a friend over, and she was not married, so the, you know, the, uh, she had a friend over. <laughs> and I wasn't feeling great. I didn't know there was someone there. And I came into the room and it was like i don't feel good and then i puked all over the bed <laughs> and on the cat and on this guy and i remember it very vividly because the cat had really <laughs> soft fur after that <laughs> she she was the softest thing in the world she had to be bathed yeah it was great <laughs> so Poor kitty. there's Poor that kitty. <laughs> yeah no uh, not the guy Poor cat yeah we can look at the guy that's what the plan exactly was. The pl- I know, but you know what? He can sh- he can take a shower. We're, <laughs> we're bald species for the most part. We yeah. dry much more easily than cats. <laughs> or beds. Stupid story. For that matter. Sorry, I don't know why I felt the need to share that, but God. <laughs> Childhood throwing up. It's all good. Mm-hmm. All I right. <laughs> what do they need to do? Oh, you need to like and subscribe. And share if you can. Yeah. Uh, also, take your meds do that yeah hydrate or dehydrate drink Mm -hmm. some water and if you're in the middle of something and you need to take a break take a small break yes it's okay and have a snack because you are a snack Mm -hmm. and you deserve it indeed and if you can see if there's sunlight otherwise do something nice for yourself yes take a break come back to it when you can buy that car you've been wanting to buy you don't need it i know you don't but you want it do it don't don't do it Collect it's a trap it's a trap cars. don't do it <laughs> it's like oh, i saw it in a magazine I be reasonable need it. how about like a pair of socks yes Just let's let's commit socks. to the socks first and then when we're ready for the big commitment we'll do the car <laughs> yeah little commitment to big commitment yeah after puppy that's a lifetime puppy commitment. from comes in there yeah before the car that's crazy to me that shouldn't be true <laughs> but it is well financially yeah you have to be much more ready to pay for the car yeah or the puppy because i'm i had a puppy once that ate drywall she tore up the drywall she was crazy and her siblings ate a bumper <laughs> they ripped off john's bumper and they ate it <laughs> she came from a special I was gonna special say, litter feral desert puppies they were so cute coyote brains no they were mixes they were rottweiler mixes with coyote no who no coyote. i thought you had some coyote mixes. we did we had a well, no we had a wolf mix we had a couple wolf mixes oh okay so i was like i thought you had coyote babies at one point Mm-mm. no thank god you had like nine dogs or something seven nine nine. Oh, oh i'm good look at that all right go take a break we'll see you in a minute bye, bye. oh hi Do you like Fantastic Pains? Would you like to see more of the Fantastic Pains podcast and crew? If so, you should join our Patreon. The Patreon, as we like to call it, is the new home of our behind the scenes content 
full uncut recording sessions, our short form videos such as TikToks and YouTube shorts, and our past live streams. You can also find some Patreon exclusive content such as our new music reviews, lost episodes, and is the new home of our mini voices series, all of which can be found in our higher tier dubbed The Only Pains. The Patreon is the best way to support the podcast, so whether you want to see more of us or just want to help us grow, feel free to sign up following the link in the description below, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of the show. I'm, I'm ready. ready. Jinx! <laughs> Welcome back. How was your break? Did you do the things? Hopefully you got some of it done. Yeah. As you can tell, we're in different clothes. You can't tell. I made sure I was wearing the same He's thing. I'm the even wearing the same continuity. undershirt. Continuity. Yeah. But we match, which we is do. funny. Yeah. The, I didn't even know you were wearing the gray underneath, and I've got the yeah the gray over here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're back. We did things, and then we took <laughs> a break, and then it, it, it's been a theme lately because of how unbalanced I am. Well, and the weather too. Yeah, we it only hits get so, so hard. We only get so much time before the meltdown starts. Mm -hmm. So generally, we're getting through a half, and then the like storm starts to break yep. and we start to fall apart and last week was brutal we yeah. tried like i was game to start and yeah. then suddenly i was like i don't feel great and yeah Karina was like i don't feel great i was like <laughs> oh no <laughs> this is a storm isn't it yeah and it was oh it was and a then pretty, i went outside and <laughs> it was like a theme for three straight days where i would get into the car and then it would start just coming down yeah. like nobody's business and i'd have to drive like that mm -hmm. it was obnoxious but it's sunny today so far. Yes. It will storm later. We but... planned ahead. We were like, the weather looks good tomorrow for a little while. Let's do it then. That is not how that conversation went. <laughs> sorry. We were both dying yesterday. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sitting on the couch. She's on the floor. I'm curled up in a ball. She's curled up in a ball. She's like, how about we uh, we record in the morning? The sun's going to be out. And I was like, good call. Well, I looked at the weather. Yeah. It was sure. just funny because we were not like, hey, let's plan an episode. No. We were like... I'm going to die here um, and I'll be alive later. Yeah. And, and then we'll do stuff. And the night sucked. So that did suck. Last night was rough. Mm -hmm. Oh, my joints hurt. Yeah, dude. I kept flopping around all night. Jen, you Jen too. kept waking up and she's like, can I rub your back? <laughs> she's like, what can I Let do me to soothe make you, somehow. you stop moving? I was like, uh, no. I mean, I let her, but it didn't help. As I know. Much. I kept my husband up because I was like, meh, meh, mm -hmm. meh. then you get up and you roll over and you're like, this also sucks. Yeah. What? What is this? What do I do? Yep. So, yeah. You need less gravity. That was that was <laughs> what's been going on with us this week. Yeah. So uh, we're back and we're going to talk about the other half today. Yes. Which is diagnosis like what did that change for us because right. we've talked about like why you need to have a diagnosis and if you are newer here and you're not sure why that is it is because having that and it's not just like you find a label and you're going to go hunt that one label down mm, and yeah. that's the diagnosis you want and you need it's not it. it makes a huge difference to have something where you can look at a doctor and go i have blank you need to treat me with that information yes. on board. Because if you go in and you're like, mm, I have a suspected, they're going to be like, shut up. We lived that life <laughs> for like four years where we we're yeah. like, eh, we think it might be Marfan's, but we don't know. And they're like, then you don't. <laughs> it's exactly. like, great. Thanks. Thanks, guy. That was always so weird to me when like, I hate it when it's on paperwork and it's like, you've had this condition. How long? And you're like, <laughs> How long since I was diagnosed or how long have I had it? Because I've right. had it my entire life. Because mm -hmm. do people ever ask you like, oh, well, when did that happen? Yeah. Like, when did that start? Mm -hmm. And you're like, it's genetic. Well, and they don't. It's like I feel I feel like for me, I get it most in like urgent or, or ER care. Oh, yeah. And it's always like they're just going <laughs> through the motions. Like yeah. they're like, oh, I got this response. Now I'm going to ask this question. And then <laughs> and I go like, that doesn't make any my sense. My whole life. <laughs> And they're like, oh, that makes sense. I'm like, yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's a genetic disorder. Wow. So cute. I wasn't like mutated by a spider. Yeah. I didn't get hit by an EDS truck. <laughs> an EDS truck. I don't think it I just did. happened. It fell from the sky. And then You've contracted God said EDS. he was like, you have EDS now. Yeah. And that's how I was diagnosed also. <laughs> Cacao. Yeah. But 
I we've heard people say things like, "Oh, you don't need a diagnosis. Oh, They'll treat that. you the same way either way." They won't, and that's not true. It's not true, especially in the United States, where our health care healthcare system is at borked. best a joke. <laughs> um, did you say poor? Borked. Borked. It's borked. I was gonna say it's not poor because it's not for poor people. No. It's if you're borked. poor, no medicine for you. Too okay. bad. Here. This is for this is a fantastic <laughs> number I found out yesterday. Oh no. I was I well I was I'm trying to get my pain meds filled. Yes. And I had to fight around and Walgreens is being a jerk. They don't have it. There's a shortage apparently in America. Who knows? Something's going down. I was looking through my my records and <laughs> in the last 12 months, I've saved $23,000 on my medications through Medicaid. Wow. I pay $3 for my my prescriptions all of them. But it's twenty three thousand dollars is the total for the last year. That's unbelievable. So it's almost two thousand dollars a month for what I take. Oh my god! That's my medication. So if I don't have insurance, I'm not getting my medication. Right. You can't. And then you have people who are like, "This is life saving. Let's make it cost a lot." Mm -hmm. We don't yeah. want to save your life. We want you to turn over all of your money forever. But yeah, I saw that number and I. I couldn't help but laugh. That's, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous because there's no reason. There's and you know which, literally which no ones are the reason. most expensive? The Concerta and the, the bipolar meds. meds. Oh, my my most loved meds, the ones that I I'm in love with that keep me normal. Yeah, so that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crazy. So that was us bemoaning the United States healthcare system. This has been a welcome public a service <laughs> announcement. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> it just, it's an example. Yeah. But you do like having that diagnosis, walking in and being able to say, these are the conditions that mm -hmm. I have instead of like, well, we suspect, well, my doctor thinks, well, I think, well, I, blah, blah. they don't care. They don't care unless it's on paper and people are like, oh, it's, you, you, yep. it's the same treatment either way. Nope. That's great. But they are not going to treat it the same way mm -mm. because they don't believe you. Right. Right. And it <laughs> it's so messed up. It's like there are people who they they like, oh, this person's an intention seeker. Yeah. Or they're a hypochondriac. Yeah. Or they're just med seeking. Yeah. Well, it's like the self-proclaimed police. Yeah. In the medical system where they're like, I have decided as a pharmacist that you don't need this. I have decided I as blue, fill in the blank. I also hate how often that happens because yeah. it's not rare. You're like, you're not a doctor. When I go to the pharmacy, I'm always stressed out. Yeah. It used to be that seeing the doctor stressed me out, but my doctors are awesome now. So when I see my doctor, I'm, I'm like put at ease. But then when I have to go to the pharmacy, it's like, oh, it's going to be a battle. Yeah. And it is and it has been the last it's couple of months. Crazy. Like they, they apply a morality to taking medication that should not be there. Yes. Sorry, that was just a thought that just pulled from the ether. But they do. They, they apply do. a morality. And I know people, especially in like Facebook groups and things, where there is a morality mm -hmm. to taking medication or not taking right. medication. It, you always see the there's that one person who's like, I just I don't take anything. Yeah. I take kale. I eat kale every morning and I'm fine. <laughs> The superiority mm -hmm. just leaking like, from oh, every word. You just had major surgery? I can't believe you're taking those meds. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. I had major surgery when they removed a mole and I didn't need any. That's always the annoying thing. If their <laughs> like, surgery is like what? I had a tooth pulled once. What? what? And I didn't do anything. I was treated like a woman. <laughs> Sorry. Yikes. Out of pocket. Whoa. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she where they're there. like, you're female. You can take more pain. Sucks to suck. Yeah, you should be used to it by now. You're right? a woman. You should be used to it by now. That is something that I just hate. Yeah, that's stuck in my brain. Uh, it's just bad. Yeah. All the bad. Mm -hmm. But so now that we know why it's important that you have a diagnosis, what has it changed for you and I? having that diagnosis because we walked both sides of the aisle yes we know what each side looks like mm -hmm. um we've had the experiences it's been so much better 
like being able, especially when meeting like my new primaries, yeah. it's always nice to be like, I have this. And then when they go, oh, I don't know, I'm going to research. Yeah. It's been lovely. Oh, my God. Because that's what yeah. happens. Like they're like, oh, I'm not really well versed in that. Let me do some research. And then you come back like oh. a month later and they're like, so <laughs> we got all this going on. Do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have this? And you're like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I love when they come back with like information that they found mm -hmm. or when they come back and they're excited because they're like, oh, I learned of a really like interesting treatment for this. That's had like really nice successes. Mm -hmm. and Yeah. Yeah. That's how Bomba is now. It's like when I visit or even just talking to her in messages. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like for an example, like she wasn't in the office yesterday, but I messaged her about a uh, med refill and she was like on it. And she made changes to it and it was beautiful. Like yeah. I didn't have to fight or anything. She just yeah. understands that I'm not going to be abusing medication. Right. Like I've been on these for like nine years now. Yeah. Nothing is going to suddenly happen that I'm going to be like, you know what? Now I want all of them. <laughs> I need them. I'm going to take them all at once. Right. Don't like, do that. We're not morticians. We're not. There you go. <laughs> but you're right. Like, having the diagnosis and being able to hand that off first mm -hmm. it's almost like you get this weird pass through the doors of trust yeah right so without the diagnosis they're like oh i have to take like your word for everything i'm not gonna do that i don't trust you well yeah and part of that is like i've gotten this a few times from different doctors but it's like do you have any conditions? I'm like, oh, yeah, I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And they're like, when was it diagnosed? <laughs> like, uh, three years ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who did it? That's the second question I, I always get. I hate that And question. I was like, You're a like... geneticist. Yeah. <laughs> well, well I, I saw rheumatology, and then I went to a geneticist, and then I was diagnosed. But after that, then it's like, like you said, you get a free pass. But, like, yeah. but the... without it, there's this, like, oh, God. suspicion Oh, yeah. It just bleeds into everything. You sound like a WebMD patient. Exactly. I think that's what it is. Yeah. The thing is, is that doctors are not accustomed to working with people who are educated on their own condition. No. And yeah. when they see that, usually they're like, oh, God, you've been on the Internet and blah, blah, blah. do you even actually have that condition? Mm -hmm. Are you suspecting this? Who told you you have it? Well, and then also like there's an uptick in people finding out about conditions yes with the internet being a thing yeah and people being more socially active yeah about their conditions like well not their being... symptoms and... right so like we found out about eds through a website right yeah and then i i always hear oh there's just so many new people with eds i know it's like yeah it's because people rare. are discovering it <laughs> it's not rare dang it yeah yeah well, and even in the last, what, three, four years, we've seen the like the numbers change dramatically mm -hmm. where they're like, oh, it's a rare condition. And then it's like, it's an uncommon Common condition. condition. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, OK, see, this is what we, the patients, have been telling you for quite some time. Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think having the diagnosis gives you the pass to be able to speak on your own condition. Yes which is different instead of having to go to a doctor and we both have lived this life and tried to lead them in a mm. nice little circle to come to the conclusion yeah. that you've already come to, yep. to hope that maybe over the span of like five there. visits, you're like, exactly. I have this symptom. It's like playing chess. And they're like, Oh, if you have that symptom, it's probably this. And then you have to come back next time and be like, actually <laughs> I had this thing happen that negates what you said. Yep. And then they're like, Oh, it's gotta be this other thing. Okay. You're like, you're going uh, the wrong way. Warmer, warmer, yeah. colder, <laughs> freezing. Dang yep. it. Now we're back at indigestion. What? It's all anxiety. <laughs> you're like, my toe hurts. It's your trauma. <laughs> Could you stop, please? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. My bad. I guess I'll just be fine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's just pain. <laughs> but that's how people treat you when you're undiagnosed. Mm -hmm. And even when the symptoms are lining up the way there's like, obviously there is something there and most likely it is this thing. It's hard to be taken seriously. Oh, absolutely. Because doctors have a lot of ego. An example of that is that with Bamba, mm. I was able to tell her after we went over the EDS stuff, mm -hmm. I was like, 
And she was like, oh, your heart rate's really high and your blood pressure is off. And I was like, I have POTS. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, okay. She just listened to me. It was fantastic. Yeah. And then she it's tested good. it because she was like, she wanted to make sure I wasn't having like a tachycardic episode. Right. And she was like, oh, no, yeah, that's POTS. Because <laughs> it was perfectly <laughs> fine like five minutes later. Right. It's like, well, yep. especially in the summer, that's what I have to tell them because they're like, are you nervous? Oh, God. <laughs> Are you nervous? The doctor makes and everyone like, nervous. Like, no, no, she doesn't. I'm not nervous about the doctor. But your heart rate. Yeah. I get nervous when I go to the doctor. I also just like, walk. I live here part time. <laughs> I, I went up the stairs. It was hot outside. The temperature changed. <laughs> yeah. And then I oh. sat down from walking around where it was hot outside. And then the temperature changed. You know what? You know what really fucking pisses me off? Hmm. This is this is legit. This is something that I've dealt with my entire life, and I hate it. I wear hoodies all the time. Oh, yeah. It's just my thing. I love hoodies. They're comfy, they're big, and I swim in them. Yes. It's my life. Always has been. But <laughs> it could be the middle of summer. I could be walking through the sun at like 100 degrees. That would be fine. Yeah. But as soon as I get into an office and sit down, and it's like 60 or 70 degrees, I start sweating yeah. incessantly. Yeah. And I... Mm, it well, drives like, me nuts because our our pot seems to work in this like weird delay mm -hmm. so we have this bizarre delayed impact of whatever it is we just did so you're like like when we climb the stairs yeah we're fine climbing the stairs and then we sit down and then we're like hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> yeah because our body doesn't know how to do it on time and then it's like now i'm confused i brought your heart rate up to help you mm -hmm. get up the stairs and there's no stairs and you're sitting what is this yeah now your heart rate is just crazy for no reason mm -hmm. and also you have no blood <laughs> it's true it's just so annoying pots is the most obnoxious condition ever yeah. so is mcas swelling up randomly oh for God. no reason not about it but i was also able to explain to her that i have that and she yeah. was like cool i understand yep cool it's always hard trying to explain to like somebody new because you feel like you're like, uh, if I hand you all of these at once, you're going to freak out yeah. and either call me a liar or run away. Was it? And I don't know which one. I, I, I justify it now because the first thing they do is look at my med list. Oh, yeah. And that that tells a story. <laughs> it's so long. And then it's usually got 17 things that I don't take anymore. Oh, yeah. And well, I'm you're like, like, no, oh, no stop that. that. Not stop that. Why would I still be on the amoxicillin? I took that like three years ago. <laughs> I'm not I haven't been I on take, amoxicillin for three years, guys. I take antibiotics on a daily basis. Just I'm just because better than you. I'm trying to breed a super bug. Yes. Because I hate you all. <laughs> I'm trying to end the world. <laughs> but yeah, like that's like, you know, the warning, I feel like. And then I, I don't feel awkward or weird about yeah. telling them things because they know that like they can tell like synthoid or the thyroxide right, is for my thyroid. Like, and yeah. They know. They know. Right. It's just, it's hard when there's this like major divide between doctors and patients mm -hmm. where it's hard to find relationships with doctors where you can inform your own care. Yeah. And remain informed on your own care. Yeah. And be able to communicate like what's going on when stuff changes. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's different when you have a doctor who's like, you don't need a diagnosis. Oh god! You're like that would be pointless, and you're like, huh, huh, buddy. Oh, yeah, the I've had doctors that are like that, where where I won't get um, referrals because it would be pointless. Yeah, but it would. Oh my god, they would not have sent me in for my hips or my shoulder if I didn't have a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Nobody would be interested in looking at a twenty-something kid, no, who like is otherwise perfectly healthy. Oh God, I, I God, I heard that so much. I hate that. You're so young and healthy, but I'm not. Right. Uh, I got lots of problems. <laughs> I mean, aside from the eds, you're pretty healthy. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, uh, sure. I mean, my heart rate sure. and my blood pressure were really good last time. Good. When I went in, it's not great. She she was like, it's a little elevated. And I was like, actually, it's really low. Right. You're like, this is this excellent is a win. for me. <laughs> Same with my weight. Again, I just I can't get over that. I'm trying to fight it. I'm trying to put the pounds back on. I'm back in the gym finally. Yeah. And very sore. Ugh. That's good though. But that also helps to be able to be like, I'm doing all the stupid stuff you would normally tell me to do. No, it is not stupid stuff. It's just like the checklist of mm -hmm. before they'll do anything. Yeah, you yeah. know, they're like, well, exercise can blah, blah. And you're like, oh my God. Fine. I'll go exercise. God. 
You're the worst. <laughs> and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to have the same symptoms. Yeah. Because it wasn't about exercise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another thing. Like when you can go into the gym now mm -hmm. and because you know about your condition, you're like, actually, I'm I'm hypermobile and I need stability yeah. and this, this and this. And yeah, like. And teaching people who have no idea what the heck I'm saying. Yeah. Like he was like, what's proprioception? And I was like, um. <laughs> Cute guy. I'm not aware of my whole body a lot of the time. I can do like one muscle group at a time mm -hmm. in control, but everything else is going to suffer while I do that. Yep. And he was great. Like I'm really happy with him so far because he was like, okay, cool. That makes sense. Let's train one muscle group at a time. Yeah. And I was like, you heard what I said. You took it into account. You thought about it. And then you came back with a realistic solution that's actually going to help me. <gasps> what? You know what I wish was more used? Huh. Uh, like, I wish this was common practice. Is that when you say something and someone acknowledges it, they go, heard, Jeff. That's, I just want that. That's something I've wanted for a long time. Like, <laughs> heard, Jeff. I want to say that to people. Heard, Chef? Yeah. It's a kitchen thing. Oh, okay. Like when the chef tells you something, you say, hurt chef, so that he knows you're, you're acknowledging and you're moving about and doing your job. There you go. But so I, like, I, I've taken what you said. It's in. respectful. <laughs> nice. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I wish we could do that. But, you know, just that'd be weird. Saying, Heard ya. Yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah. It's not the same. <laughs> okay. Heard chef. Thank you. <laughs> Like you were so far away. Yeah, very I was cute. Gone. <laughs> I'm now your sous, sous chef. So cool. Cool. I'm down. They did say they wanted to see some cooking. That's true. So eventually, we'll have to trash do that. panda cooking. I'll make my carbonara at some point. Oh yeah, that'd be a good one. Then we can hang out and cook. I don't know. I'll do candy stuff. Yes. Make I'm fudge. The, the prince of sugar. He makes wonderful fudge. And other hard candies. Anything with sugar. Mm -hmm. I'm a sugar daddy. They they call me that. <laughs> but I have no money. They being who? Uh, the people in my head. Oh, okay. Who tell me things <laughs> about myself. <laughs> They're up there like, yeah, I get it. You're a sugar daddy. Yeah. And then I'm like, <laughs> heck yeah. And then I say that out loud and everyone looks at me weird. Weird intrusive thought, but I'll take it. <laughs> like, yeah, that's not that's not damaging. <laughs> It's, it's positive. You're like, yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> no, I love sugar work. That's funny. Oh, man. There was a year when I was the most depressed that I made the most amount of fudge and sugar away. stuff. Oh, my God. I had like seven trays of fudge. I did white fudge. I did dark fudge. I did normal fudge. I did wow. lollipops that were coffee flavored. I did Ooh. caramel. I did. Oh, man, I remember your caramel. Your caramel was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think you probably stuff. taught me how to do hard candy because mm -hmm. I made hard candy for a bunch of like Christmas gifts one year. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard for me to remember things that are like positive in my childhood. I'm like, they're buried under all this junk. <laughs> Get out of your trauma. <laughs> kind of move it all to the side and oh, be look, like, oh, memory. that's a core memory. Imagine that. <laughs> the core memories are not good ones. Nope. They never are. <laughs> <laughs> they are trauma. No, nah, trauma. But yeah, yeah. Like we've we've gone over why, mm -hmm. and then what did it change? Mm -hmm. But we haven't talked about the other part that we were supposed to talk about. Ah, uh, yes. Things that we've learned that from other trash pandas. Yeah. And things that we didn't learn from the doctor, basically. Yeah. Number one thing I didn't learn from a doctor was the importance of connecting with people who are experiencing the same things you are. Yes. That Very yes. is so important. And I feel like that is like a number one. If you've been diagnosed or you are suffering with a chronic or invisible illness, you need to find people who have experienced what you have experienced mm -hmm. because it is hard and sometimes impossible to relate with people who have not experienced what you have. Yep. Not because they don't want to help you, but because they don't have those experiences to draw upon. Mm -mm. And it's just going to be frustrating. 
like I've tried with people, you yeah. know, I'm like, oh, I got this, this and this going and on. Like, and then oh. that sucks. OK, yeah, yeah I could have <laughs> gathered that on my own. Thank you. Right. Thanks for the support. Like they're trying. But right. at the same time, it's just like, God, you just you just don't get it. No, they don't. I hate this family. They don't get me. <laughs> they don't get me. Yeah. But I think that's that's one of the big things that. No, that's huge. And I mean, that's kind of what we're doing here is trying right. to alleviate that symptom exactly. in ourselves and in others. Exactly. Take down those like walls that tell you you're alone mm -hmm. or that what you're experiencing is unique to you and no one could possibly ever get you. Because believe me, there's somebody who could. Yeah. <laughs> and can. And, and will. does. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's a good one. What else? What did I learn? Yeah. Pretty much everything. I feel like. <laughs> Most, Most things of I've what picked I'm... up from other people. Yes. Because a, a lot of it has been, uh, I think this thing happens to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to talk myself out of it. And then you read it. Or like for us. Yeah. Like we're just connecting all the time and being like, this went on. And being like, yeah, right? That. Right? Yeah. Like, oh, good. You, yeah. Yeah, that too. I'm not crazy. Right. That's what I mean. That was the genesis of the podcast. It was less than just talking about everything <laughs> that was going on with us every yeah. every other week being able to go oh my god me too mm -hmm. <laughs> all the time yeah so find somebody who can relate mm -hmm. and then the thing is is that we all pick up tips and tricks along the way and there's so much knowledge out there it's unbelievable yeah. what you can learn um finding good like specialists is something that yep. i know other people have learned mm -hmm without because sharing information between us just really helps it really 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 helps yeah so find a community that you can share your information with and i know for us like we were never really taught how to start relocating stuff we kind no, of I learned know. it out of necessity and then shared it with one another <laughs> yeah we still do and yeah so i think that's another one that we've picked up along the way that has nothing to do with doctors. And doctors part, hate this one thing. <laughs> part of what we should talk about too is not being discouraged when something doesn't work. Because yes. not everything will work for you and yeah. some things will that don't work for other people. Right. But you got to be open to trying things. Yes. Well, and on that same track, like not letting like fear mongering yeah. affect your decision making. Yeah. Being able to spot that is huge. Yes. Like when you're reading a post and you're like, obviously this person has one hell of a bad experience. Right. That's not universal. Yeah. Yeah. There's, well, and there's a lot of that. There's other reasons for things to be happening and we kind of, it's easy to fall into that pigeon superstition oh, yeah. of like, well, I think this is what's doing it. And you're like, ah, I think maybe it's something we else. Are, that's we approach happening. everything like maybes though. Yes. Like it could be this or it could be that. Yeah. Which is nice. No, and I think we like to test our hypotheses and mm -hmm. search in different terms when we are, like, Googling things. Until we find the right terms. Right. And then yeah. using reputable sources, but also hearing from other people, mm -hmm. because that makes a difference. Because the thing is, is, like, it might be a symptom that everybody shares that just doesn't have a name. <laughs> right. There's a ton of that. There's a lot of that oh, going boy. around. <laughs> And I'm sure it's like that with every condition. Yeah. Like, oh my god. With EDS, we have a we have so many things that are just understood, like the teeth yeah. stuff. Yeah. Most people don't know about that uh -huh. unless the, you're in the communities. Right. Or the um, anesthesia. Yeah. And numbing stuff. Mm -hmm. That's not. It's not an official symptom. You're not going to find it in a symptoms list. Right. But it is something that is extremely common within the community. Yep. Um. What else have we learned from other from other trash pandas specifically? I think I've learned a lot of hope. Oh yeah, that's a great one. Because we've talked to people that are worse off than us. We've talked to people that aren't as bad, but it's kind of universal. Yeah, and it's well in different points in our lives too. Yeah, which oh, I think yeah. makes a huge difference. Because mm -hmm. before we had our community, there weren't like elders we could draw upon who. Or people who had grown up sick the way we had, mm -hmm. or um, it was just, it was hard to envision a future when we didn't have anybody who 
was like us right modeling that future exactly and now we do That's which huge. is super interesting and a total like it's a door that i didn't think was going to open yeah so yeah very important there and feeling not crazy for the way we handle things because we're kind of yeah <laughs> unique we thought we were like nobody is gonna watch these nobody's gonna listen to these everybody is gonna be nobody like, could this relate is ridiculous because of how crazy people. we are and right. then it turns out a lot of people are like no this is my vibe yeah like all right and we're like yes we're Heck not yeah. crazy and we can keep doing what we're doing because before like what the assumption was something's wrong with us yeah oh and yeah the way we handle it and the way we think mm -hmm. so yeah Breaking down those walls and not being alone. I'm trying to think of something practical that I've learned, but it's like most things are like that. Yeah. <laughs> and like, seriously, because I've what will happen is I'll find something online. I'll try and put it in context of myself and then I take it to the doctor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. here's this hypothesis. This might be going on. Mm -hmm. And then like we test it with whatever means we have. And then. Right. There's a lot of that. One of my like biggest searches if i'm if i'm looking at a symptom mm -hmm. or list of symptoms i search that and it'll usually pull up a condition or like the most often repeated condition that it's telling me and then i will take that condition and apply it with um in eds yeah and see if there is a connection there um and go from there usually mm -hmm. so there's there's a lot of like I don't know. It's a lot of like detective work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's worth it though. Yeah. Cause God, <laughs> when we, when we were doing things without knowledge mm -hmm. or information, I mean, that's kind of what this whole half of this is about yeah. is that things were so much more difficult when we didn't have the full picture. Right. Or like even partial stumbling picture. Stumbling around in the dark. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I remember yeah. being like, is it rheumatoid arthritis? <laughs> <laughs> half matches is it marfan's <laughs> not really especially because sort of? i don't, look I don't know like, i don't present <laughs> yeah or not understanding what some of the symptoms might look like so you're yeah. like i think i have that but i'm not sure if what i have is that right yeah or like the cigar paper scarring oh, was a big one we had to like trip over and try to figure out what the heck is that actually supposed to look like yeah and how can i apply it to me or does it apply to me mm -hmm. at all? So there was lots of that. It was just dark times. Dark times. <laughs> it really, it really was. was. It was like stumbling around in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Looking for a light switch. <laughs> yeah. But we had each other at least. Yes. Like we would we would commiserate and be like, I'm having that thing. Yeah. I have the weird midnight shuffle. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> you do that too? We were talking about this earlier because it's like we just when your joints hurt. And they hurt to lay on top of. Mm -hmm. You just, you can't. And so you just flip over a yep. lot in the middle of the night. And trying to get comfy. <laughs> and then relocate your hip real quick. I dislocated my ring finger on my right hand. And I haven't been able to set it. Oh, no. And I don't know how I did it. Because I woke up with it. And I was like, ah. Oh, I hate that. I had really bad morning hands this morning. <laughs> you guys get morning hands, right? Where they just don't work. And they're stiff. And they just. Morning hands. I remember being a kid and going to let the dogs out in the morning. And not being able to turn Grab the, the doorknob. Door. Yep. Because morning hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> oh my God, dude. I remember I had that problem with the outboard. Because oh. we had to like turn it for the outboard engine. Yep. And I, could, I just couldn't just do like, it. I can't. I can't. Hold I, had, it. I was like, Lori, can you drive? I can't. <laughs> I've had to do it like when you go to get gas and you have to unscrew your. Oh, yeah. I have not been able to unscrew it a couple times. <laughs> I'm like, I dislocated this finger. Let's make sure it's still angry. It is. Poke it to see. Grab things. Does it still hurt? Yeah. It hurts in my wrist. Okay. And in my hand and in my finger. <laughs> it sucks. Have you checked your elbow? No. I refuse because my <laughs> elbows have been not great lately. They're terrible, aren't they? They're they like, are elbows are so dumb, obnoxious. Yeah, I'm sick of it. And they hurt, and then you lean on them once, and you're like, "Oh God, why?" And it's not your funny bone; it's just your bone touching the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stupid. But yeah, 
I mean, that's that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, I think so. There's a lot of things that we have learned, but really, if you if you want all the knowledge, go to the Discord. Yeah, <laughs> the Discord holds much knowledge. Um, that's really the beauty of being able to share information between us and mm-hmm. recognize each other in what's going on. It's crazy oh. what you find. Huh. I wanted to thank everyone for being so sweet about last week's episode. Yeah. Because I've been struggling and it was nice to read everyone's comments and yeah, we don't deserve it. <laughs> we don't. You guys are awesome. Life is hard to do unmedicated. Yes. But the like the beauty of it all is that you guys understand. Yeah. And that's really the thing about this community is that it's not just that you feel seen. It's that we are seen through you. Mm hmm. <laughs> I mean, literally, <laughs> you're watching, but we, this helps us feel not alone. Right. Like this, this really brings us into the fold of a community that mm-hmm. we didn't have before the podcast. No, we made a community out of stuff we wanted. Yeah. And, and we it's got been it. amazing. Mm-hmm. Like absolutely amazing. We've never had to mod anything nope. ever. Now that you said that though. <laughs> I know. I mean, Dorian's in the chat now, so <laughs> <laughs> go get belligerent. <laughs> yeah, go pick on the new guy. Go talk to the bot because the bot. Oh yeah, the bot is sassy. A hard time. The bot. The bot doesn't have parents shit. or something. Yeah, it doesn't know family. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what a family is, but I do know that I like tacos. Okay, bot. What? And then Craig's like, I don't have tacos, and it's like, that's fine. I'll find some. Like, okay. <laughs> weird weird we're gonna have to mod our bot <laughs> like bot calm down because <laughs> you're we were, getting aggressive nobody was even talking to me no. six <laughs> craig was I talking was to like, dorian Ta-da. and then the bot's like also i'm here and crazy <laughs> crazy Great. it was crazy <laughs> yeah oh boy <laughs> but that's that's our discord for you it's just fun yeah <laughs> sorry like, He's beating I me up. Off my pants and his pants were right there. Oh, she hit me. So from knee to knee. Rude. I'm just beating him down here. Just uh, uh. kidney punch. Kidney punch. <laughs> kidney in your knee. Yeah. Kidney. Kidney. It's my kidney. Adult knee. Nah. Oh. Fine. I just remembered how I used to have really bad knee problems. Me too. Yeah. They used to lock. That sucked because I would just fall. Because suddenly yeah. you weren't allowed to take I had a scar on my step. left knee for like 10 years from falling on it constantly. Yeah. Ugh. And I hated how my knees looked all the time. Yeah. Because they were always like just. Banged up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But had bad times. It's not ladylike. <laughs> also, I can see your ankle, so. <gasps> Scandalous. Yeah. Here's my, my shoulder. Hoodie. No! <laughs> bad. Wrong. <laughs> wrong. It's just wrong. <laughs> and she's wearing jeans. Ugh. Women can't wear pants. <laughs> Women can't. What is this? Anything. <laughs> I told you I was the patriarchy. I warned you this morning. <laughs> I warned her. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Yeah, so, no. Sound off um, about things that you've learned, too. Yes. Like, I want to know. If there's anything major that you picked up, because yeah. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there are things that I can't remember. Oh, my God. But as soon as I read it, I'll be like, oh, yeah, no, yeah. I remember something very similar to that. I love like hearing from Ruth. Mm-hmm. We get we get so much information on so many different things. She's so methodical about everything. Yes, too. exactly. Great. It makes it very easy to kind of integrate the mm-hmm. test. So good stuff. All right. Thank you for coming along. Thank you for tolerating our um season of nonsense thus far with our <laughs> we're all just a little on season fire. six season of the unmedicated season of the unmedicated yeah that's that's really what's going on here it's like jurassic park I mean, oh my chaotic. god chaotic i want to i want someone to sneak me out like shaving cream <laughs> full of meds you know what i mean go, <laughs> go to some facility i need i need something dino dna sure that might work might will not. it make me fast <laughs> I thought you were going to ask if it made you fat. And I'll be like, yes. <laughs> Dino DNA definitely makes you fat. Duh. You That's really... just science. <laughs> <laughs> they're not big. small. They're big. <laughs> they, they are big. Yeah. You're correct. Mm-hmm. 
Well done. Just saying. <laughs> All right. We love you guys. Thank Fact. you so much for coming along with us on our wild adventures of silliness mm-hmm. and belligerence. We appreciate it. And we love getting to do this. And you guys are the reason we keep getting to do this. Yep. So. And we have big changes on the horizon. Yeah. We don't know exactly what, but they're big and they're coming and they're going to be great. For everyone. Mwahaha. Hopefully. I don't know. It sounds like a lot of work for me. So pity me. We'll see. In the comments. <laughs> I'll be like, sorry, Chris. Sucks to suck, bro. Just sound off with pity. Hashtag pity. Hashtag sucks to suck. Because <laughs> it does. Great. On that note, <laughs> be kind to you. Be kind to others. And we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Pity and dino DNA. What? Why do people listen to us? <laughs> I don't get it.